Hey, Salvador Braverman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Genius Five YouTube channel. And today we're talking about the secret to mass appeal. Mass appeal when it comes to launching a product. It could be via Kickstarter and you go, it could just be a product in general, honestly, with e-commerce. I wanna kind of debunk and get into what causes that element to happen and just kind of clue you in a few different things that if you've never explored this before, um, what I think is gonna be really important, specifically something I'm gonna share in the middle of the video, I think it's just gonna blow your mind. So let's get into it right now. What is the secret to mass appeal on Kickstarter and some of these other platforms, right? Mass appeal to me is one of those things that is really highly coveted. Everyone wants to appeal to a lot, a lot of people. Because we think about the world, like there are billions of people on the planet. We don't need to sell to even like if we sell to even 1 billion people, right? It's going to be tons and tons of revenue, tons and tons of value that we've created, changed many people's lives around the world. So mass appeal is important for a couple of reasons. Number one is like you want to have a product that appeals to a lot of people so it's easy to sell, right? And you have a big market and the larger your market size, the bigger the company can get, the more people you can have working for you, the more people you can have working with you. But I think even honestly, like the real reason that a lot of people want this in the community it doesn't even have to do with like the financial reasons. It's more of like, you want to just impact other people. You know, you want to have a, an effect on other people. And I can't tell you, like, I feel way better about my life um, having different, you know, viewers on YouTube and being able to have, say that people have read my book and have written me letters and sent me screenshots reading my book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula, right? Like that changed my life because I feel like I'm helping someone else. And that's just like so cool and so rewarding. So I think mass appeal actually goes beyond you. I think you, as a creator, as an individual who is watching this video, you have an ethical obligation in order to impact as many people as possible in your lifetime for the positive. Now you don't want to do it at the expense of like, I don't know, ruining your relationships or not having enough time to spend with friends or really investing in those core areas of your life with your family. Those are all very important. But when it comes to your career, I think you have an ethical obligation to rise to the greatest level that you can when it comes to impacting other people, putting out cool stuff, taking action on your dreams. Those things that you said you were gonna do, man, like a year ago, two years ago when you were a little kid, those adventures that you always wanted to have, you have an obligation as a person, as an individual, or as a female, right? To, to go forward and to really combat those obstacles push past them in order to generate, I think, that, that relationship with a bunch of people who don't even know your name. Maybe they know the name of your products, right? Or they know the name of your brand. Still, that is something that is just so profoundly rewarding that I think you owe it to yourself to have that experience because you are more than capable of it. You see campaigns getting funny every single day on my podcast. You see them live, right? When it comes to Kickstarter and Indiegogo, they see new people and younger people and even older people launching campaigns and products. There's no reason you can't be that next success story. So what is the secret to mass appeal, right? The first thing that we want to think about, number one, is the actual target market. Okay, now you've probably heard that, that word before, target market or market size, right? Or niche, maybe you heard the phrase, the riches are in the niches, right? And one of the things that I think is a hallmark of any great success story is the fact that while as a sales or a marketing pitch, it might be like, this product is for everyone, right? Behind the scenes, when you're talking with the actual business owner, or you're talking with the people who are really putting together that product, they know exactly who that product is for. So when you look at these really hyper successful campaigns, it's not like this product is for everyone. Now they might say that, they might market that way, but internally, that is not the case. This is what I call like to call it the external versus the internal messaging or the external versus the internal paradigm, whatever you want to you know, put your name on it as. But there's basically a difference between what everyone sees publicly and what's happening behind the scenes, right? That's kind of what I've devoted my life to is trying to help people see more of what's happening behind the scenes. So first of all, you should be hyper targeted on a niche group of people that are going to enjoy whatever it is that you're creating. Now, there are a lot of different ways in which you can stumble upon that group of people. More often than not, the most successful creators are also a member of their own community. So for example, they love board games and they got fed up with all of these boring games. So they decided to make their own like 
offbeat tabletop card game that had an interesting flavor of humor that was different from anything else out there. And they loved it, their friends loved it, so they decided, let's put it out there and maybe more people will. And lo and behold, a lot of people do. So the first way to have mass appeal is to really think, number one, and write this down, what communities am I already a part of? What are the things that I enjoy doing? What are the problems that I have and I'm wrestling with every single day of my life, right? And to start to think about that and to start to think about the other solutions that are existing out there. So the way you have mass appeal is to be have a product which fits into some kind of a niche, which is for a specific type of person, which is for a backpacker, which is for someone who is looking for a really high end looking kind of luxury journal or something because they love stationery and they're a writer or someone who enjoys artwork and they want to use tarot cards and almost something that's like an ornament that's going to be on their coffee table, right? You want to tap into those interests that you already have and it's going to be a lot easier for you to come up with a product idea that's going to have mass appeal within that actual community. And that's going to be, first of all, one of the most important ways to make sure that you're building something that other people are going to want to buy or that other people are going to want to have. If you are already a customer or you're already a part of the community, it's going to make it so much easier for you to create something that has just never been seen before or has elements to that product that are very different from the other things on the marketplace. So personal story, I resisted this for so long in my life, man. Like, I always thought it would be like a cop out to become a writer or to do YouTube or to do speaking or all these kind of things. Cause I already knew I was like decent at it. And like, I already liked doing it and I love reading books. I'm like, well, how cliche is that for me to be the person who loves reading books and then start writing them? Like it just seems too easy. So I would try all these difficult things that didn't come very easy to me. I learned a lot. Don't get me wrong. I learned a ton, but it wasn't really just like, um, what I was meant to do or what I was put on this earth to do. And once I started to do more of the stuff that I was really, you know, passionate about and excited about, and I got away from like computer programming, I was more interested in like writing and that kind of stuff. Then my career took off like a rocket ship, obviously, you know? So you should never shy away from like, oh, I love tabletops. Maybe I should create a tabletop. No, that makes sense. If you love tabletops, consider creating a tabletop. If you want to learn how to do that, or you want to get involved with that. So that's the first way. And the reason there is, again, you just have intimacy when it comes to the market. You understand the other products that are out there. And likely you can also, it's almost like if you're a chef, you're a really good chef, you can dip your little spoon into the sauce or into that um, broth and taste it and be like, that's good. Versus someone who doesn't have any taste, they're gonna do that and they're gonna be like, that's good when it really sucks. Or they're gonna be like, I don't know if this is good or not, right? For me, I can read writing and I can be like, okay, that's good writing or that's bad writing. And I can kind of um, do that in my own work. So it's important for you to be able to do that as well. The second thing, when it comes to creating mass appeal, something that's going to appeal to everyone, right? Or something that's going to have a high level of synergy with the market is to think about, is this something that other people are going to want to talk about? Now, there's really great books on this. I think there's one, you know, so it's like The Power of Habit, which I think is a really good book. But um, one of the most important concepts when it comes to this is like understanding once someone interacts with your product, and that could be more of like a creative thing, for example, a music piece, or it could be something like a physical product of some sort, who are they going to tell and why are they going to? So any kind of product that you've come across, for example, like a new camera or a new song you really liked or a new artist. I can't tell you, like when I discovered like FKJ, my friend told me about them and I was like, I love this guy's work. It's awesome. Like chill beats, like my kind of vibe, FKJ is awesome, right? So when I started listening to him on Spotify, I would just tell a bunch of other people like, dude, I love, you gotta check this out, right? When you are really delighted by a product or you see something that's so cool, you want to share it with other people because it also kind of makes you look a little bit cool. It kind of makes you look like a little bit of an insider. So the next big part of mass appeal is you will discover this, for example, in the pre-launch phase. If you go and watch some of my videos on that, or you read my book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula, or you join my mastermind where I talk about all the different stages of a Kickstarter campaign, right? You can actually engineer this to a degree, but also you can very quickly spot whether or not you have this. So this could be like the viral component of the campaign if you wanna think of it with the viral uplift to the campaign. The main metric you're gonna to wanna to think about is if I introduce this product to one person, how many people are they going to introduce this to? So if you're introducing this, let's just say like you start at Facebook, right? You start at like the, the actual website, Facebook. 
And as a result of one person joining, two of their friends joined, or three of their friends joined, or five of their friends joined because they told everyone about it, that's an exponential growth curve because one person joins and then like three people join and then those, those three people, three more join and just very quickly shoots up, right? The chart versus let's just say it's one person joins and they don't tell anyone. And then you have to market, market, market. Another person joins, they don't tell anyone. Market, market, market. Another person joins. Very slow, very slow, right? It's not going to have that same level of viral appeal. Another would be, let's just say you have like one person joins and they make an offhand comment and like statistically like another half of a person joins, right? So like one person joins, you get like another half user, and like two people join, you get one other user. So like it's still gonna be a slower curve than if one person joined and three other people told, you know, then bought the product or as a result of one person buying it, you know, four more people did. And it's because of what they're saying, right? Or because they're recommending it or because it starts trending in the Kickstarter algorithm. So the next hallmark of having mass appeal is are people excited to share it? If you're doing the pre-launch, are people talking about it? Are they tagging their friends? Are they sharing it on your behalf? That is like one of the, the, the major hallmarks of having just a, a product that has mass appeal within an existing niche of people. And typically that, um, if you wanna call it like a trigger, right? Or a decision mechanism, whatever you wanna call it, it tends to also have an emotional basis. So there could be the logical thing like, wow, there's a great deal at Target go and get, you know, get this amazing um, chair or get something for like a ridiculously low price. Or look, Dunkin' Donuts is having like a free donut day. You know, I'm from Massachusetts where I grew up. And like if they had like a free donut day or Krispy Kreme, like you're gonna tell your friends just because of the logical information, right? But when it comes to products, there's almost always like an emotional feel. So for example, like a tarot card deck looks so, just so beautiful and you're like, this is just amazing artwork. I gotta share this with my friend. Like it's just so beautiful. And there's that feeling which prompts the sharing. So that's another element I'd say when it comes to like that, that viral uptake component. The next piece of mass appeal is feeling like you're getting a ridiculously good deal. Okay. Let's think about this. What any kind of take in your own mind, think about a product that you believe has mass appeal, like incredible appeal. All right. So that could be, you know, more like a, a real product in the world, like an iPhone, right? Or something like a really nice camera, or it could be something in a specific niche that you've bought into, maybe a certain you know, type of car or something like that, right? You can talk about it in your own life, you can think about that, or you can think about it on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, something that has mass appeal. 100% without question, always it feels like there's a ton of value that is being offered for a pretty decent price. So like, Initially, maybe the iPhone was a little bit high priced, right? You know, it was a little bit overpriced. And um, you tend to get like a little bit of early adopters in there and like people trying it out and it was buggy. And then once they started to get the price point down a little bit and they started to get quality going up and start to have that like meeting of the um, two, I guess, lines when it comes to a graph where it's good quality, really good quality, decent price. It's like a no brainer decision. Things started to skyrocket, right, with that product. And that's because it was just such a no brainer decision. There wasn't a lot of sales that was required. So for example, for you, if it's like a, a tabletop game, you just feel like you're getting a ton of value um, from people, maybe artists and illustrators that are really good at what they do. Incredible gameplay, just looks great. If it's a new video game, comes out just so beautiful. Would love to play this on like a big screen TV and so much fun and so intricate, well designed. You can tell so much work went into it and you only have to buy this thing for like 50 bucks or whatever and get that entire incredible experience. It's like, that is a no brainer decision. You're not even thinking about the money anymore. And as well, when you're telling your friends, they're not thinking about the money. So the next component of having mass appeal is just having a really great product or deal where it feels like you're getting so much value that it dwarfs the amount that you're paying. And this can also, if you've ever read books like, you know, The Innovator's Dilemma, um, or when you talk about like jumping curves when it comes to innovation. So for example, like if Tesla uh, eventually comes out with a really, you know, low price car that's completely autonomic, it has all these incredible features and benefits, it's almost like, why would I continue driving my old car? It's like a horse and buggy, right? It's like you're jumping the innovation curve to a degree. And it's like nothing else that has ever come out. So for example, like the coolest cooler, the coolest cooler was a Kickstarter campaign back in the day. And they did many millions of dollars with their project. 
And when they come out, it just has so many functions and so many things you can do. And it seems like a novelty item that's also like, it gets a ton of value. It's like, yeah, I want that thing, right? And obviously they had other issues when it came to their production and stuff, but just like focusing on that element that is what I call mass appeal. It's a great deal, okay, for what it is that you're offering. The next thing for mass appeal is a little bit more in the way that we would call like logical or um, you're thinking about actual analytics and metrics. And that's just having a big enough audience. Okay, now I know that that sounds a little bit strange because like I talk about niches, right? And having like your very specific vertical or very specific niche. But here's why having an audience, and sometimes this will just naturally hold you back, um, is going to prevent you from having mass appeal. A really good example in the real world would be like independent artists and musicians. So you have someone who's creating some really like esoteric paintings or like really cool abstract art, and like their fans love them, right? but there just aren't enough of them. And like, they're never gonna become like this major artist or you know, this musician just because not enough people resonate with that style of music. So I know that creators and myself included, like I'm a writer, man, like that this sucks for a lot of us, but it's just kind of a fact of life. You have to fit into a genre, put it this way. You have to fit into a genre of some kind. Now I've had people I've done coaching calls with where they're like, Sal, I wanna do this super interesting creative project. They do it. And they're like, you know, it was well, but I probably could have raised 10 times more just the amount of effort I put in and like the production value and the, what I did with the video. Next campaign, I'm gonna do something that's more in a, in a very specific genre. So some of the best selling books out there, you think about like Twilight, right? You think about Harry Potter. Um, you think about like, you know, those thriller kind of novels, James Patterson, like these people who have made a lot of impact from people and as well, you know, obviously been rewarded for that. They are fitting into a genre, my friend. They are fitting into a genre, a genre that is already established. So if you have a product that's gonna fit into some kind of a genre, for example, like a fitness product of some kind, obviously that's a very big genre. If you're coming out with something new that's in something, other kind of category where it's like, um, you know, something that's already established to have sold products before to this marketplace and that people like buying it and it already is a big marketplace, you're gonna have way more mass appeal if you're selling to that niche then if you're selling to something a lot smaller that just doesn't have the size you need to expand, right? And it's just prohibitively difficult for you to, because at some point in time, you're just gonna tap out the marketplace. And let's just say like the abstract art example, you're almost convincing people to try out abstract art just to be interested in your art piece versus working already with a bunch of people who already have abstract art as one of their interests. So this is kind of also the difference between, I'd say, between Kickstarter and Indiegogo when it comes to market size as well. But, you know, that goes beyond the point. But um, this is something just to be aware of. Like, if I am launching a specific category, and a lot of these industries are growing a lot as well, so you have to be aware of this. You know, some things that people thought were small, like making your own card game, is now super big, right? So just be aware of the category or the genre that your product fits into. And rather than looking at that as like prohibitive, look at that as something where if I'm in a big category and there's a lot of competition, that's not a bad thing. That means that if I do well, man, I can expand this thing like nobody's business. The next hallmark of a product that has mass appeal and this kind of is different because, you know, we think about products and we think about buying things and we think about like what goes into that, right? And we just really are focused on like the transaction, like how did that product go viral, right? What we don't think about actually is the people behind that product, okay? So stay with me here. Every single product that you've ever bought or that you've ever used, you look at that and you're like, okay, this is a bunch of components. Like I got this external microphone over here, right? This is all has this bunch of different electrical components and I bought it because of the price and there we go, it looks like that. And that's like what the product is. Every time I see a product, I see people behind it, right? Because first of all, there was the engineer who made the electrical components within that and maybe a couple of engineers as well when it comes to different types um, of things. I'm not even aware of it when it comes to electrical engineering. Other things like the design of it, the materials that it's made of, um, how it was shipped here, how it was marketed to me, the different cameras that it works with, right? The customer service behind it. There's a whole group of people that I look at that one product over there and there's actually, they are all behind this very simple experience of me going and buying this thing. So products that have mass appeal tend to also really have very strong teams 
behind them. And if they don't, what ends up usually happening is it tends to be like a one hit wonder kind of a thing. So maybe they got a ton of sales, they blew up, they got so much attention, so many backers, so many people that are buying this thing, but then they didn't deliver, right? Or it kind of just petered out after there, or they didn't make good business decisions and now they're out of business, right? Something can have mass appeal for a certain period of time, but they need to have the right people behind that product. People that are working with them, for example, like coaches, people like um, internal HR, making sure that everyone's happy, things like marketing, things like accounting, etc. Like there needs to be people behind an actually mass appeal product to support the actual demand because that's that's what if it goes well and it works and it's like taken off and the thing is selling the hot like hotcakes, you need people who can actually um, you know, keep track or keep up with that level of demand. And if you don't have it, you can't scale the business or you can't at least fulfill the demand that is available. So you wanna think about like, I guess, uh, McDonald's, right? There's a great movie out there called The Founder. And that movie is all about how like these people have come up with an incredible system and a great tasting product, but they couldn't really go beyond their own little market until they met someone, you know, Ray Kroc, who was able to think about a little bit bigger, the infrastructure, teammates, people that are needed to bring this product to people around the world. So mass appeal goes beyond as well, just having the right product and the stuff we talked about. It's also the people you're working with and having really A players, having high quality people that are part of your team in the same way you watch a blockbuster movie, who's in the movie, man? You got the great actors, you got the incredible directors, you got the people that know everything about set design and costume design. They have an A team in order to pull this off. If you want to have an incredible product experience where people are just buying this thing and everything is going right, you need to assemble an A team in order to tackle that. Don't get me wrong. There's always the underdog story, right? Like Rocky. You know, that was written by one dude and it was like shot on a massive budget, very small budget, sorry, uh, massively small budget. And it ended up taking off that movie. So like it does, there are always the counter examples. And I love the counter examples. I like, I talk about that so much on the podcast, but the more you can at least get people in your corner, the easier it is to have that mass appeal product. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high tech provider to store, package and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfill Right today. Link in the description. The final thing, the final thing, man, that I'm going to mention for you today when it comes to creating mass appeal on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or with e-commerce in general, is you gotta almost have like a symbiotic, mind-melding experience with the customer. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, specifically with your marketing, but to kind of just go a little bit of a layer deeper, People need to feel like you're reading their thoughts. They need to feel like you're preemptively already know their problems. That the, even the way you talk about their problems and the way that you talk about the product is in the same way that they are talking about it in their own mind. And it's kind of like you're delivering something to them that they didn't even know they needed. So if you're able to really have an intimate understanding of the mind of the customer, what are their fears? What are their desires? What do they want deep down? Not just what they're telling you. Like someone might want a camera, but in reality, they want to go and travel the world and capture that experience and share it with their kids, right? It's more about like, do I really need to buy a hammer or am I trying to hang up a beautiful picture in this apartment that every time I walk in, it just kind of makes me smile, you know? The hammer is the tool. At the end of the day, what you're trying to do is different. You know what I mean? So it's a really good product that has mass appeal. The people behind it intimately, intimately understand the psychology of the customer, of the consumer, and how to speak to them, and also to speak to the things that they are looking to do, speak to the things that they're afraid of having happening, the things that they want to see as a compelling vision for the future. Because at the end of the day, every product is just one element or like one step on this discovery of life and like you're going about your life and maybe it captures your attention for a little bit and you get it and you feel better and like you also are able to do cooler stuff with this product and it changes your life a bit and you keep moving right so it's it's like it's not the end all be all where your entire life is going to be around this new exercise product it's like how did this exercise product get me feeling good about the summer months 
or allow me to stay fit during COVID and make me feel positive about myself and give me that energy to you know, plow on and do business stuff. So it's really about understanding the customer mind. And that's the kind of last thing I want to leave you with. In addition, if you want more like really in-depth insights just like this, number one, go and check out this class that I put together for you when it comes to running a successful Kickstarter campaign. So this class, you can go to crowdcrux.com slash masterclass. It's free. C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X dot com slash masterclass. Crowdcrux.com slash masterclass. Second link I got for you is I got a killer crowdfunding tips newsletter that I send directly to your inbox and it's also free, which you can check out at crowdcrux.com slash newsletter, C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X dot com slash newsletter, crowdcrux.com slash newsletter. Go there. I'll start sending you some weekly emails. It kind of just gets you thinking in a positive way, get you inspired, and also deliver those nuggets of gold when it comes to how to run a successful campaign. Also get bring something cool and new into the world. Be successful along the way. That's always nice, right? And I hope that you enjoy it. So again, my name is Salvador Brinkman. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Come subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you next time.